In this video, we're going to be taking a look at classifying rational numbers. And the essential question is, how can you classify rational numbers? Now you'll need to turn to page 47 in your Go Math book, get out your math journal, and a pencil. So let's take a look at the Explore activity on page 47 together. It says, Alicia and her friends Brittany, Kenja, and Ellis are taking a pottery class. The four friends have to share three blocks of clay. How much clay will each of them receive if they divide the three blocks evenly? So we can see what they're asking for letter A. It says the top faces of the three blocks of clay can be represented by squares, as you can see what I have here on the screen. It says use the model to show the part of each block that each friend will receive and explain. So I'll show you the answer here, and I'll kind of walk you through it. So it says divide each square into four equal pieces. So we can see we have one square already divided into four. We need to do the other two as well. So you can do this with me. Okay, and then it says write each person's first initial on a, on a piece of each square. So you can see I have this right here, and I want you to do that as well in your Go Math book. So you can see Brittany, Kenja, Ellis, and Alicia for each block of clay. Why is it divided up into four sections? Because it's divided amongst four people. Now from here, you can see letter B. It says each piece of one square is equal to what fraction of the block of clay? So you can see each piece, since the block of clay is divided into four pieces, each piece represents one-fourth. Now, let's take a look at letter C. Explain how to arrange the pieces to model the amount of clay each person gets, and then also sketch the model. So what you can see for this is we have Alicia. We know Alicia is getting one, two, three of the one-fourth pieces of clay. Brittany, we can do the same thing for Brittany. So we see Brittany is getting three pieces as well. One, two, three. Kenja, same thing as the rest of them. You can see with Kenja, one, two, three pieces as well. Then finally Ellis is getting three pieces as well. And I want you to write this in your Go Math books just like I'm doing here on the video. So we have that written out. We've drawn the sketch. So it, it says explain how to arrange the pieces to model the amount of clay each person gets. So we can see arrange each person's piece in a square. So that's what we did. We took a square and we arranged each person's piece in that square. Now you can see the square is not full. Why is the square not full? Because we can see each person received three one-fourth pieces. Not four, so three. So we divided up into three, and then we left one area blank there. Now we can see letter D. So it says, what fraction of a square does each person each person's piece cover. Okay, so we can see that three out of the four pieces are covered, correct? So because of that, we can see the answer is three-fourths. So there is room for four pieces in each square. However, only each person has three pieces, so three-fourths of the square is covered. I think you can understand that. So three out of the four pieces there are covered for each square that we have. So since three out of the four pieces or four sections of that square is covered, it takes us to letter E. How much clay will each person receive? Three-fourths of a block of clay. Now why is it three-fourths of a block of clay? Because we divided three of those blocks into four pieces. So each section up here represented one-fourth, and you can see Alicia had three one-fourth pieces. So letter F, how does this set situation represent division? You can see dividing the three blocks of clay equally among four friends 
represents 3 divided by 4. And I want you to write down that in your math journal as well. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a few questions to reflect this. It says 3 divided by 4 can be written 3 over 4 or 3 fourths. How are the dividend and divisor of a division expression related to the parts of a fraction? So let's take a look at this. I want you to write this down. So the divisor is the denominator of the fraction and the dividend is the numerator of the fraction. Okay, so you can see the divisor and this the divisor is the denominator of the fraction the dividend is the numerator okay so it's important to remember the dividend is that first number and we can see the divisor is the second number so let's take a look at number two it said how could you represent the division as a fraction if five people shared two blocks and also if six people shared five blocks okay so what we're doing, it's important to make sure we're not dividing people or anything like that. We're dividing the right thing. Okay, so if five people share two blocks, it would be two divided by five, which if you see the def if you see the explanation up here for number one, it will be two over five. And then also if six people share five blocks, now we're not doing six people divided by five, you can't do that. You have to do 5 divided by 6, which would translate to 5 over 6 as a fraction. I want you to write that, that down for number 2 as well. Now let's take a look at rational numbers. So a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction where a and b are integers and b does not equal 0. So what I want you to do is take a look at example one, letters A through D. I want you to read those over in your math book. And then let's take a look at numbers three, four, five, and six together. So you can pause the video and take a look at A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's do number three together. So negative 15, we want, we want to write this rational number as a fraction. It's going to be negative 15, and any number by itself is understood as being over 1. All right, let's take a look at number 4. So we have 31 hundredths. What I want you to do is do number 4 all by yourself, and you can work on that now. Okay, so 31 hundredths will be 31 over 100. Okay, so let's take a look at number 5. We're taking 4 and 5 ninths, and we're turning that just into a fraction. Taking a mixed number and making it to an improper fraction, you want to multiply the denominator by the whole number. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 5 is 41. And then you'll have that over 9, so 41 over 9. I want you to do number six all by yourself, and you can work on that now. Okay, for your answer, you should have 62 over 1. Now I want you to turn to page 49, and we're going to look at classifying rational numbers. So we can see the Venn diagram. If you remember that, it's a visual representation used to show the relationship between groups. And we're going to be taking a look at the relationship between rational numbers, integers, and whole numbers, and how they're related. If you forget what rational numbers are, just you can look back in the video. Okay, so let's take a look at example number two. And it says, place each number in the Venn diagram, then classify each number by indicating in which set or sets each number belongs. So you can see that number 75 belongs in the set of whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. It, it's a whole number in that it, it is a whole number. Okay, it's not a negative or anything like that. And integers deal with both positive and negative numbers. And then also rational numbers. If you remember, a rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction where a and b are integers. And then, I'm sorry, where the numerator and denominator are integers. And then also the denominator is not equal to zero. 
Okay, so we can continue to look at B, C, and D within example two and see why they are where they are within that within that Venn diagram. Okay, so let's say for example number seven. It says name two integers that are not also whole numbers. Okay, now remember integers are both positive and negative numbers, but the key for this is they're not also whole numbers. So in other words, they need to be negative numbers. And I want you to write this down. This can be a, just any negative number. Okay, so we can have negative 2 and negative 3, for example. Okay, so let's take a look at number 8. It says analyze relationship. It says describe how the Venn diagram models the relationship between rational numbers, integers, and whole numbers. So let's take a look at this. What we can see, all whole numbers are integers and rational numbers. All integers are also, are all rational numbers as well. Okay, so that shows you some of the, um, the relationships between rational numbers, integers, and also whole numbers. So let's like take a look at page 50. Now what you'll need to do here is indicate which set number 9 belongs in. So rational, integers, whole numbers, all of them, two of them, one of them whatever it would be. So I want you to work on number nine all by yourself. And for number nine, you should have rational numbers for your answer. Now what I want you to do is work on number 12 all by yourself. And your answer for 12 should be rational numbers, integers, and whole numbers. Now moving on down, I want you to do number 1a all by yourself. And if you just have 4 divided by 5, that's completely fine. And then I want you to work on letter B all by yourself. And letter B, you should write 4 fifths for the answer. Now I want you to work on number 3 all by yourself. Now for 3, you should have 29 over 1. And then the final problem I want you to work on all by yourself is number 4. And you can work on that now. Now you should have 25 over 3 for your answer. Now let's jump down. It says how is a rational number how is a rational number that is not an integer different from a rational number that is an integer? And I want you to copy the copy this answer down. It says when written in the form of a fraction, non-integer rational numbers have a denominator that does not divide evenly into the numerator. So this concludes the video on classifying rational numbers. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.